This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Zigbee is super limited. Uh, the maximum packet size, including framing headers, is 127 bytes. <laughs> <laughs> 127 bytes? Bytes. It bytes. is. It, it, it's designed for uh, sensor networks. Um, like, of the class of run a sensor off two AA batteries for uh, eight months. So, like, industrial, I've got a, uh, I have a, a valve, and I need to know the pressure, and it just spews out this stuff at a regular interval, and I've got readers that are like, oh, here's a val valve pressure, or whatever. And, of course, when you're vendor making something that specific, security isn't exactly uh, the first thing you think of, right? Right. Well, there, there's a couple problems with that. Uh, one of the problems is the microcontrollers talking it don't mm -hmm. have the horsepower to do crypto. So a common model for that is... There's, there's no like hardware, at least 3DES or something like that built in? Well, so one of the common models for that is that the radio chip does the crypto. So between the controller and the radio is uh, SPI, uh, interchip communications, unencrypted. So one of the things Travis was doing a couple years ago was showing that you could hook a logic analyzer up and and the chip says to the radio here's the des key oh my god that is brilliant in fact i do remember seeing some of this research where it's like a lot of the encryption stuff was vendor specific and so that certain vendors would always use the same ki and things of that nature yeah uh, travis has done a lot of this so he's uh, looking up some of his papers is a really good way to look at some of the the uh the attacks against it one of the other problems is they go you know well we don't have any storage how do we send a key to every sensor on the network? Well, when they boot up, they'll ask for the key, and we'll send it to them. <laughs> That's brilliant. You're right, because I mean, I can't imagine that, you know, the, the idea behind it is that it's low power, right? And that it's um, you know, easy to implement. And so whenever you've got that kind of convenience and that kind of uh, small uh, footprint, you're, you're going to have some interesting security things, which previous to now probably weren't even looked at because the hardware didn't exist to audit such a thing. Um, what have you seen in, in your you know limited testing since coming up with this? What, what have you seen like that you've sniffed that's interesting? I've seen some very weird things. Um, there's a couple of layers on top of 802.15.4 that uh, support different network topologies. So there's 6-low-pan, which is uh, kind of an IPv6 lo local uh, local network thing. Then there's straight-up IPv6 in 127 byte chunks. Oh my gosh. So they, wow, that's kind of a small MTU. Yeah, I think they just use it for the addressing abilities really. Uh, then there's there's this well, there's, there's hella addressings up in IP6. Yeah, but when you can only go, you know, 400 feet, then Oh, is that what it is? So that that was my next question is this is a 2.4 gigahertz ISM band, right? Uh, but what's the range like this? Because we're talking about really low power units. I mean, most of these what are, are running off like, you know, 30 milliamps or something. Well, a common transmit power would be like one milliwatt. One. So w w what's the range on that? Like five feet? Depends on obstruction. Yeah. I mean, you can go pretty far with one if you've got open air. Or You're right. And the ham guys are looking at me right now going, I talked to the space station on a milliwatt. Yeah. Uh, and if you have like a mesh topology, then you'd have a bunch of super low power nodes and then like a powered plugged in coordinator. So they'd all report to it and it would shoot it back to your main monitoring station or something like that. Dude, that is, that is wicked. Um, I'm sorry, and I interrupted because you were saying that you, there were uh, there were interesting things. You said earlier that you ran strings, like to, to take a look at straight ASCII if there's any like human readable words up in there. Find anything good? Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, running strings against a Wi-Fi PCAP will get you a whole bunch of the SSIDs, and it's really a pain in the butt to sort out what's good. Well, because everything nowadays is WPA. Well, that too. But I mean, it's just seeing the beacon frames, you're going to see the, the SSIDs. So if you're running strings, you're just going to get a whole pile of crap that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, running strings against this, because there's no network names. Um, the best one I found was what appeared to be the start of a file transfer over Zigbee, transferring the file zbrouter.bin, <laughs> which implies to me that someone is actually For sending a radio firmware over... Oh, do you think that it's probably one of those, like, kind of like the uh, equivalent of PXE boot? I'm thinking maybe, or it could just be a device identifier going, you know, here's my firmware rev, and the firmware rev was the name of the file. I, yeah. I know nothing more about it other than seeing that. Yeah. Uh, I saw another one that had a file name of an MP3 in it. Nice. Dude, I 
can't imagine the, the kind of possibilities and we're, we would only know if we had this kind of stuff uh you know this is this is your second hardware project now uh pretty much yeah so, so what, do you, what have you learned with this one i learned i don't want to build 50 things again <laughs> now how did you end up building 50 things um uh, th there's too many small parts to make it a reasonable kit mm -hmm. so pretty much i had people uh, I was having people email me, and then once I had a bunch of people waiting, I'd go build 15 of them, and then email them out links to pay for them, and then ship them out. So I, I wasn't taking money until I actually had the mm -hmm. devices built. So I just sat there with a hot plate. and. Uh, okay, it's time to start looking for like a board shop and an assembly unit, right? Yeah, that's where we're, we're going with it next, I hope. That is awesome. And so on the uh, the software side, uh, what kind of plans do you have with the Android app? Uh, well, right now it does, it pretty, it's pretty much feature complete now. Um, so it'll do the display, it'll do the logging, um, it'll do GPS, and you don't really need much else. That is kind of brilliant because you showed me how you had this just running like battery powered in your pocket or on your dashboard as you're driving here from, from Seattle to, to Tor Camp. And it's just fascinating to see the kind of stuff that you use. It, it really is reminiscent of those early 2000s war driving. And it's super fun. Oh, yeah. It's real fun to go back to that and go, oh, now, now there's new, new networks to look at. Yeah. Um, what's also interesting is a lot of times Zigbee is connected to interesting things. I mean, it could just uh, a, a lot of cities are rolling out power and water and gas meters that are Zigbee or 802.15.4 yeah. um, related. Uh Sometimes it's connected to the equivalent of SCADA systems. Oh, and, and see, here's the thing. This is something that the you know we're learning with SCADA systems is like, you know, this really specialized stuff. A lot of times, security is an afterthought because you know who would attack that? I mean, Wi-Fi. Like we know, like oh, hackers are all over that. But you know, now that we have the Ubertooths of the world, now that we'll have the the Kisbys of the world, um, it's going to be an, a fun wake-up call and um, an adventure for us. Does do you have the capability in this to do uh, like raw injection? Oh yeah. Uh, what's also great is that particular radio chipset uh, also has an amplifier, and the redesigned version will also have an amp in it. Uh, so yeah, you know, I was saying most transmit at one one milliwatt. That will do uh, uh, about eighty nine milliwatts at the antenna jack before you put you know your nice directional on it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see this thing with like a parabolic antenna pointed at some. I don't know, factory? Like, <laughs> Where do you find these? Yeah, and that, I guess that's what we all need to find out because this is so new and interesting. Yeah, all right. And it's, it's 2.4. Yeah. Which means all your crazy Wi-Fi and Bluetooth sniper antennas. Yep. Yeah. Oh, this, this is so brilliant because there's already a whole industry around. You know what? Thank you, FCC. Thank you for the ISM. <laughs> this is this is brilliant. Dude, I could geek out about this all day. Where can people get updates on the project? Uh, so it's linked off the Kismet site, or you can go to it directly at uh, kismetwireless.net slash kisbe, uh, K-I-S-B-E-E. -E. All right. Well, we will have to check in and see the progress on this. I see now, like, the latest rev. You've got a case for this and everything, and it's really coming into, into its own. So thanks so much for spending some time with us, Mike, here. Thank you. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. Be sure to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. In the latest episode of The Ben Heck Show, in a throwback to the 80s, Ben builds a pocket basic computer complete with keyboard and screen. Don't forget to go to element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win Ben's pocket basic computer as well as other builds from Ben's show.